<laughs> them Lakers. <laughs> now let's look at this. The Los Angeles Lakers. Now the Los Angeles Lakers has been known for many of years to be the staple of this great NBA nation. Right? But, did you know they had asked David Stern what his dream finals match would be? Do you know what he said? Lakers versus Lakers. The late David Starr. The Lakers are the team that they want to always prosper and be the face of the entire league. And you can win championships anywhere. But when you're a Laker, That means a lot. That means so much more. That's the bedrock of all U.S. of A. Now, Moving right along. You see the Los Angeles Lakers without LeBron James, who's supposed to be the end-all, be-all, best player to ever play the game. Best player on the planet. And the Los Angeles Lakers have managed to win three games with Anthony Davis playing like crap, playing one good game out of maybe three. They've won three games in a row, all without LeBron James. He came back. They lost his two games. They came back. He sat down. They beat. What? Two of the top teams in the top five of the NBA? Without LeBron James. They've won three games in a row. So tell me, what do they need LeBron James for on the basketball court? LeBron has missed 30 games out of 70. The Lakers are over 500 without LeBron. So what is this telling you? They could survive without LeBron James being on the team. They could beat any team in the league without LeBron James. He's only there for fanfare. That's it. He's there for the fans. That is his purpose. 
That is his goal. That is his existence. Is for you, the fans. They selling you his t-shirts. They selling you commercials, merchandise. They selling you his face. They want to use this clown to sell you the league of today when his era has been over. People who have come in with him, damn near all of them are gone. Except for Mello and Chris Paul. You know, Melo was out the league, back in it, and just holding on. He's 18 years. But they talked about him like he's an anomaly. Because it was always about this guy. And let's take a look at what he's actually done for the league. Hmm. Playoff numbers, lowest they've ever been. Regular season watch time of games, lowest it's ever been. Um, actual adherence of people watching it, sitting down watching a game. So the watch time, lowest it's ever been. Um, well, the attendance, they could try to blame that on COVID. So, you know, that's... You know, another knock, but before COVID, the numbers were the lowest days that they've ever been. And they tried to blame streaming for that. Okay, well, streaming numbers have not been strong. The reason why they've been taking down videos on YouTube to try to strengthen their streaming network. Uh, no one's buying the NBA package anymore. That's the lowest it's ever been. Uh, they've been giving out free NBA packages every week. To anybody who would get it because the numbers are the lowest it's ever been. So, just trying to get you to realize what's actually happening here. The company feels as if they need their face to be the face again and that's going to bring in the revenue. If people just see the Lakers win, people feel good about themselves. When that's so not the truth, we so don't want to see the Lakers win. We so much are tired of the Lakers. And this has been the problem with the sport of basketball. They feel everyone else is an anomaly. So the small base teams, if you're a small market city, you basically are not going to make it. You know, uh, Golden State Warriors would have never won a championship. Had they not had the exciting Steph Curry. Steph became the face of the league. The league had to get on board and say, we are riding this wave. This was what dug us out of the graveyard. It wasn't LeBron James. He put you in the graveyard. What got you a glimmer of hope was the players of tomorrow. Which was Steph Curry, James Harden, Kyrie Irving. These are the players that came into play that were there, the talent that you were ignoring, that was saying, hey, we are here. The game's evolved, and we're playing it. Pay attention. Steph brought it to the stage where you noticed Dame Lillards, who were playing while Kobe was there. Kobe told you about Dame Lillard as a rookie. Like, man, this kid, <laughs> you better pay attention. It took you how many years to notice Dane? Because you weren't looking. You're too focused on a on a 40-year-old, broken down old player. This old dinosaur. We gonna focus and put all our dollars on the dinosaur. Okay? When we got to build around this Laker team and make them something, why? No one wants to see it. They don't. And and now 
the way the league is today, the world would basically give somebody a high five to anyone that would defeat them. Because the NFL has stayed prominent because every year the Patriots don't win the championship. Tom Brady don't win it every year. He's won seven, but he don't win it every year. There's a new challenge, a new team that come up every other time, you know. We had Kansas City play the 49ers in a Super Bowl. We had the Rams play the Patriots. You know, each year, it's another team that has an opportunity to go that you might not have even, even thought of, and there they are. They've made it. In the NBA, they will give you, we had Cleveland versus Golden State five years in a row. So for half of a decade, we had Golden State versus the Golden State Warriors versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. Four years, five years in a row, half of a decade. So for half of a decade, we had to endure that. Five years. And those five years is all why Adam Silver took over as commissioner. Five straight years of that. Well, well we have four actually. They went to four. Sorry about that. Four years in a row. And then LeBron got hurt and he went to Los Angeles. So the Golden State went five years and then they played the Raptors. And we don't know what was going to happen the very next year, but it was going to be the Lakers and possibly the Milwaukee Bucks. That's what they had drawn up, but we didn't get that. And... We end up having this bubble thing, and the Lakers were shoveled into position to be the champions. Denver got completely screw job out of all everything, and it just became a joke. A running joke. And because of it, you know, it's, it's a shame. But the numbers are down for a reason. There's a reason. People are tired of seeing the same thing. I mean, why are they going to see Memphis play Minnesota? When there's no shot in the world, even though they make the playoffs, they don't have a realistic shot of winning a championship. But I'm like, why not? They're a team, right? They made the playoffs. They beat one of these teams to get here. Why can't they win in a series? Because the league won't allow it. That's why. The league won't allow it. And because the league won't allow it, everybody else has to just endure it. Welcome to the new reality. And when you get tired of watching the sameness of the league, 
you're going to tune out like everybody else is. They're watching other things. They're watching the game. And the league know it. That's why they're trying to get this play-in tournament to get people interested in watching the, the end of the season and all this. It's over. It's all over. The writing's on the wall. They know it. They've seen it. It's all over. Now, what people got to do is write, find a way to write the ship. The way you're going to write this ship is let the game dictate. Let the game dictate. It showed you the moments of what was great. It shows you that. This game showed you that basketball matters. Not, not anything else that you could think of, but basketball actually matters. Now, if you want to go ahead and make it about other things, you can, but basketball game actually matters and that dictates and that comes up to the forefront the Utah Jazz are playing probably the best basketball of any team in the league this is truly their year now people say they're unproven in the playoffs and they've been written off wouldn't it be a great story if they capped it off by winning a championship or even going to the finals. It's clearly not a season that LeBron James need to be in. We do not need to see LeBron James limping around in the finals. We don't. We don't need that. At least I don't need to see it. Maybe y'all can. But I'm going to say like this. If you want to see LeBron James limping around in the finals, that's on you. Some people in L.A., they don't care. They just want to party. And that's cool. But if you want to party in L.A., you should be rooting for the Clippers. Because that's a basketball team. Guys are out there trying to play together. They play as a team. And you don't have guys standing around. You got guys actually playing. And they playing for each other. Grinding it out every night. So they represent what basketball is about. Denver represents what basketball is all about. There's a lot of teams out there that are representing the game, not the BS. So I'm appreciative of those teams that are out there trying and they're playing the game the right way. Because those teams are successful. And none of those teams have LeBron James on it. So what does that tell you? Is he really needed? Don't forget to hit the like button. Support the page by hitting up the cash app, which is Carcino. K-A-R-C-E-N-O. And by all means, uh, check out the Patreon. As we will be dropping some explosiveness 
very, very soon. I'm out.